Welcome everybody back to the Fire Talk podcast and YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Luis Campusano. Now, obviously, he has been probably the biggest prospect that's been discussed. And Ryan even came on our show earlier this week, and he basically felt like it was like assuring that he's going to get moved in a Eric Hosmer deal. So, and I, I think I don't think it's just him that shares that opinion. I think a lot of people feel like that right now, uh, especially because the, uh, the Potters went and got Jorge Alfaro. So the big question for today is, is it dumb? to trade Luis Campusano, and I'm saying this more in the context of you're trading Luis Campusano to get Eric Hosmer's contracts off the books, but what do you guys think? Do you think it's dumb to trade Luis Campusano? So the skill set and everything, I, I think I, I said it in the last video. I said, uh, you know, the skill set of Campusano tells me he's untouchable, but getting rid of the contract tells me he's not. Um, now, they are raising the luxury tax this year. I don't know by how much, but... Pretty much it was kind of confirmed. Um, either way, though, you kind of want to get that contract off your books, especially if there's a salary floor you need to try to take an advantage before next year when Eric Hosmer gets 10 and 5 rights. Um, then you basically can't trade him. Like, he can veto any trade, um, and, and that's not what we want. What we want is to be able to get rid of him now because, I mean, we already don't have much leverage as is. I think a lot of teams know, like, we can lowball him and – and, uh, you know, they're going to have to take it either way because if they don't take it now, they can't take it anymore. They can't take it next year because Eric Hosmer can just veto it. So I think, you know, a lot of people were very frustrated with Luis Camposano's performance in the MLB last year. I thought it was unfair to be frustrated with him. I think it was, a, it was a, you know, he got called up in an unfortunate situation kind of with Austin Ola down and everybody expecting him to just be some stud catcher. I think catching probably takes the longest. It's like tight end in, in football. Tight end takes around three years to develop and become an amazing catcher. Um, I think Luis Camposano, that could probably happen to him too in baseball. Um, we see Will Smith is not the best defensive catcher, but he's an amazing hitter. I think that's what Luis Camposano would be. He'd be a really solid hitter. He was hitting the ball hard. I know his average doesn't say so, but he was hitting some missiles. And, um, it's just the defense isn't there yet. The the pitch calling isn't there yet. And that's where, you know, building rapport with your pitchers, building confidence behind the plate to catch the guys that you're catching, um, you know, getting confidence from, from the guy that you're catching, that all comes with time. So I think he got an unfair evaluation from us Padre fans for sure. I still think he's a great catcher, um, but unloading the contract is priority number one. Um, there's a couple that we have to unload. But Eric Hollander is the main one. And if that's what it takes, then it's not the worst thing in the world. Will it be dumb in the future to just get rid of the contract for Eric Hosmer? Probably. I mean, we could either write out Eric Hosmer's contract and keep Campusano for the future. But that just means our playoff window gets a little further and further away because any way you look at it, Eric Hosmer is one of the worst first basemen in the MLB. And his offensive numbers don't say so, but when you look at everything as a whole, it's bad. And the thing with Campusano is, like Isaac's right, we didn't get the greatest look at him. Uh, what we did see was he was hitting the ball hard. He had a couple good games, but his pitch calling and defense left a lot to be desired for, especially when you're so the Nola behind the plate, you know, the games that he calls, the games where he clearly just, you know, when he first traded for him, there was like three shutouts in the first week that you traded for him. You know, when you're used to his game calling, his defense, he doesn't let balls go behind him. You saw that a couple times with Campy where he misplayed a ball on the ground or just whiffed. Though for Com the best thing about Campy, though, is his upside is you're going to get a, a power hit catcher that can absolutely match the ball. A guy that can probably hit around an 850 OPS for – the first six, seven years of his career, you're going to get something outstanding and something that you're not going to get in any other catcher, except probably J.T. Ramuto and the outlier that was Salvador Perez this year. And the question, that, and I guess it is a yes for the Padres, is getting Eric Cosmer or getting rid of Eric Cosmer that much of a priority that you're willing to risk? Trading Luis Campusano, who is this great catching prospect, and unfortunately for the front office, who has been desperate to have a winning season and desperate to bring a World Series here, it looks like that answer is yes. Is the hardest thing? Probably not. 
But if you can bring an upgrade to first base and shore up the lineup just a little bit more and the defense along with just the infield defense, I think the answer is yes. Uh, so as much as it is dumb to do it, it might be a necessity. Yeah, I think this one's a little bit tough. Um, I, I've seen some people in the comments, and this is why I, I thought of talking about this, is like the Padres shouldn't trade them. To me, it also, like like you're saying, Chase, it feels like the front office is is in a spot where, I mean, A.J. Preller, is he on the hot seat? I don't know. Is the seat getting warmer? Yeah, 100%. I think everyone could feel that last year. So they're they are in desperate need to have a winning season, to have a lot of success this year. Luis Campusano is unlikely to come in this year and be a very successful player right from the start. Um you also have Austin Nola back there. You also have Caratine. You also have Alfaro. So you're looking at this and you go, okay, can you move Eric Hosmer? If you package Luis Camposano with him, yes, you're probably you're very likely to be able to because I mean catchers are almost like a premium position. We went through the catching list. Guess what? If you have an elite catcher, you are one of the couple teams in the league that has an elite catcher there is like it's real muto and then there's a big big gap after that i definitely felt like when we were going through it but you go through you know you go through the names and stuff and it there it's hard to, to hit on a catcher you see some of the questions with luis campusano and i'm going to get into the positives w- with him in just a second here but the big concern was he doesn't seem like he has any feeling for calling a game and you felt that right away with with the pitchers now, I get that he's really young, but I think that the Padres thought is, hey, this guy's unlikely to really make it as a catcher. Yes, he's a great bat, but he's more a, a DH, first base, and a catcher. Like, if they think that, then I don't think it's dumb. However, if they view uh, Luis Camposano as being able to really understand and pick up the catching position, I, I'm going to have to say it's dumb because you do not trade a premier player at a position that is almost like overvalued throughout the league because people want to go get that guy just to move on off of a contract. I get that the Padres don't have a lot of money right now. I get that if you D if you DFA Eric Hosmer, then it's going to be really, really rough on the salary this year, but it's just hard to, to look at an elite prospect like that and move him. Now, the one thing I will say is we look at Luis Campusano's numbers and a lot of people bring up last season. He had 38 plate appearances. He had 38 plate appearances. And before that, he had had four plate appearances at the MLB level. Besides that, in 2019, uh, yeah, 20 in 2019, so two years before, the highest he had played at was high A in Lake Elsinore. So this guy should not have expected to, to come in there and just flourished. After that, he went down the AAA, he struggled for a bit, and then he got really hot and he finished the year pretty strong ended up putting up some pretty solid numbers. So yes, I have faith in him as, as a hitter, but I don't know if I have faith in him to be able to develop as a defensive catcher. And I think that's the big question. However, the Padres are seeing, you know, the Padres organization sees him every day. If they think that's something that's just not going to come around, then I think it makes a lot of sense. I think you're, you are selling high. You are taking advantage of a market that where a lot of teams want that catcher. But if he is going to be able to pick it up defensively and they believe that he is, then trading him is, I think is foolish, but I don't know. How you guys feeling? I mean, I'm still torn on it. I I, I really like Luis Camposano. I think he's going to be a great catcher. Um, I don't think he's going to end up being, you know, like a Yadier Molina type defensive player. But um, with the bat, I think he, I think he's great with the bat. And I think he'll end up being great with the bat at the MLB level. Um, I've always kind of hope. hopefully the Royals just take back Eric Hosmer just because. Um, but I don't know. I, I think the Cubs are supposedly some major suitors. I don't know. I've seen that. Um, but I think Luis Camposano would fit great with the Cubs. Um, uh, they seem like they might want to get rid of Wilson Contreras. So, um, they're building their future right there, but I don't want to see Luis Camposano gone. It's unfortunate that it's come down to this with Eric Hosmer. The guy is my least favorite Padre of all time. Um, and, and the, unfortunately the Padres haven't had the best of luck with with catchers. Austin Hedges got too many chances. Francisco Mejia got not enough chances. Um, Luis Camposano doesn't really even get a chance. So um, I, don't, I think it's a dumb idea, but like Chase said, it might be a necessity. It's it's really hard to consider trading him because when you look around the, 
minor league systems throughout the league. I think there's only one other catching prospect that I think we can all name is just as hyped up as Luis Campuzano, and I think it's Adley Rushesman on the Orioles. The guy was the number one overall pick, and if you look at his college stats, he's probably coming up this year. And league stats are the same way. So when you're going across the league and you only see these two guys as the premium catching prospects and you're only going to get rid of Eric Hosmer's contract for it, it kind of burns because you're getting rid of a potential perennial all-star catching uh, a perennial all-star catcher. And you're just like, wow, we got rid of Eric Hosmer for, for uh, we got rid of $40 million of Eric Hosmer's contracts. Cause it's not even guaranteed that we get rid of the entirety of Eric Hosmer's contract. If we trade him with Luis Campusano, which that might be even the worst part. You're still owing Eric Hosmer money and you're just using this premium catching prospect to get rid of a chunk of it, not even the entirety. So if they don't get rid of the entirety of Eric Hosmer's, Eric Hosmer's contract, I think it's a dumb move. And if they do, even then, it still might not look the greatest in the future for an already rocky trading pass for AJ Preller, as we have come to notice. Yeah, I'm with you guys. It, it's just tough to like give up a guy to just remove a guy. Like you're literally giving up a guy and to not pay a guy to play against you. Like it's so strange to me. Um, however, I mean it, it does make sense. Like, like I understand the thought process. I think that Hosmer has to be moved for the Padres to make a true run. Um, but I, I think we gotta not this week, but you know, in the future sometime, we gotta figure out what we think is the most optimal way to get rid of Eric Hosmer. Because it's tough. Like there's like there's been a lot of ideas floated around. I feel like this one is the one that makes the most sense. But when you say like, oh, we're gonna trade Luis Campusano, is it dumb? It's like it might come back and really burn you. So I think we're gonna have to do a deep dive on that and do another episode sometime. Cause I think that, that'll be a fun one to talk about. And we'll have to go in and be like, all right, you restructure it like this. You do what the, the what the Dodgers did with Adrian Gonzalez, where they 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 paid him like a million dollars a couple years ago. Like they've been paying Adrian, Adrian Gonzalez for like five, five. 10 years it feels like um so a lot of teams find creative ways to do it but we'll have to look into that and do a little bit of a deeper dive but let us know what you think is it dumb to trade Luis Camposano do you want to see him moved in a Hosmer deal let us know but that is going to do it for today's episode thank you all for listening and we'll talk to you very soon